I'd like to begin this lesson with a review of statics and the state of mechanical systems. So this is just a review of, of basic physics. So let's consider what we can normally consider in basic physics, which is a point mass m. So we have a mass m here, and it's subjected to two forces, let's say f1 and f2. The time rate of change of the momentum of that particle is equal to the sum of the forces that's acting on that particle. And the momentum itself is defined as the mass times the velocity of the particle. Uh, the, and this is sometimes written as the mass times the acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces acting on the particle. So this is basic Newtonian mechanics, so this is Newton's second law. Now, if we have a situation where the sum of the forces that's acting on the particle is equal to zero, then we know that the acceleration is equal to zero, which means the time rate of change of the velocity is equal to zero. And if the, which implies that the velocity is a constant. If that constant happens to be zero, then we have a state of rest. So that's sort of what we would call static equilibrium of the particle. So there's a bit of terminology that's useful to know here. So if the sum of the forces is equal to zero, we call those the equilibrium conditions. The sum itself we define or write as the symbol R and we call that the resultant force. So the resultant force being equal to zero and the velocity being equal, equal to zero means that the particle is in a state of static equilibrium. And static equilibri equilibrium is a very important state for mechanical systems and so it comprises a, a large part of elementary physics and we will need that in what we're going to do as we move forward in this course. Now real mechanical systems of course are not simply single particles. So for example we could have a wrench acting on, on a bolt or we have a vehicle driving down the road and this is these are systems composed of many material particles and they have forces acting on them at a number of locations. So for example the car we have forces on the tires, there's the weight of the car acting at center of gravity and there's perhaps the wind resistance or the forces of the wind acting on the car as it moves down the road. Uh, what distinguishes these systems from the particle is number one that they have spatial extent so they're not just sitting at a single point in space and also that the forces that are applied to them act at many different locations. So the car is the primary example there where you have forces that the tires and at the center of gravity etc. So this leads to an additional requirement for equilibrium. So if I have a body over here, let's say B, and it's subjected to a number of forces say F1, F2, and sort of generic force Fi, then we have one additional requirement. And that additional requirement is that the sum of the moments acting on the body also have to equal to zero. The moment itself of a given force is defined as the cross product of the position vector from some reference point, let's say O, to the location where the point is being, where the force is being applied, I. So the cross product of R zero I with respect to the force itself is the moment. And the reference point is arbitrary actually in all of this and we'll see why that is in a, in a little bit. Uh, the, this total sum here we usually call the resultant moment. So we'll say M, we'll put this little subscript R here and then up here we put the reference point that we've used to compute the moment. So this is the resultant and for static equilibrium the additional requirement is that the resultant moment be equal to zero. So these are two reminders from elementary physics. So the first requirement comes from Newton and this one is actually due to Euler. Okay, so there are a couple of things that are important to remember here from elementary physics. Number one is the collection of items R and MR, so the resultant force and the resultant moment, it completely characterizes the effect of any given system of forces on a rigid body. So if you can calculate the result and the resultant moment, you can actually compute everything you need to know about the dynamics or the motion of a rigid body. Um, the other thing is, is that if you have an assemblage of rigid bodies, then the resultant force and the resultant moment has to equal zero for each rigid body together for the system as a whole to be in equilibrium. So for example, suppose I have 
two rigid bodies that are connected by a pin, then let's say rigid body one and rigid body two, then what I need to have is that the resultant moment and force on body one has to equal zero. And the resultant force and resultant moment on body two also has to equal zero. So I have to have both of those conditions. And it's important to understand what I mean by the resultant force on each individual body. So what I can do is I can separate the two bodies. So this is what is known as making a free body diagram. So I have body one and body two. There may be forces originally acting on the two bodies. So I'll draw those in. And where I've separated the two bodies from each other, there are also forces that are transmitted from one to the other. So let's suppose the pin that connects the two is frictionless, so the only thing that can be transmitted through the pin are forces. Let's call that, we'll call that one FV, and we'll call this one FH. And acting on body two, is going to be a set of forces that's exactly equal and opposite to FH and FV. So this force here is minus FV, and this one here is minus FH. So this is a free body diagram here. And this is a very important device in engineering for analyzing systems. And these forces that we've put on this system here are sometimes called internal forces. These are forces that are internal to the original system that we looked at. As far as each individual body, body one and body two is concerned, those are external forces because they come from a body that's external to the body in question. Uh, and the fact that these forces are equal and opposite is Newton's third law. So that's statement that action equals reaction. So this is a very important concept in analysis of mechanical systems. Um, now, so when we have assemblages of rigid bodies, we have to have this condition of the resultant force and the resultant moment equal to zero for each rigid body for the entire system to be in equilibrium. Later on in this course, we're going to deal with deformable bodies. And in a deformable body, we have the condition, a similar condition, but it says that for every part of the body, the resultant force and the resultant moment has to equal zero for equilibrium of the entire system. So let's consider what that means here. So suppose I have a beam that's built into some type of support, and I apply force to it. Well, when I apply that force to the body, if it's deformable, it's going to bend. Okay. So we'll have a new shape of the body. But what we mean by the statement of the resultant force and the resultant moment being equal to zero for every party or part of the body is says that if I take the body and I split it someplace into two pieces, so I make what is known as a section cut, and so this is a version of a free body diagram where I don't split, say, the body at any obvious location. I just do it at an arbitrary location. If I split that body in, into two parts, now across the section cut, I have action equals reaction. There are forces transmitted from one part to the other. So there is a force acting here. And there is also some kind of moment. So I'll use a double-headed arrow to indicate a moment. And on the other side of the section cut, I'm going to have an equal and opposite force, and I'm going to have an equal and opposite reaction moment. So we have, let's say, F1. Here we have minus F1. And here, let's say, moment 1. Here we have minus moment 1. Okay. And what our statement of equilibrium for the deformal body says is that if I make this section cut, then each part that I examine on my body, say this body over here with these forces acting on it, the net resultant force and resultant moment has to equal zero. And the section cut is arbitrary. So I could have made a section one or second one. Suppose one that looked like this. 
and now acting on this section cut there's going to be some force so it's going to be a different force than before let's say F2 there's a moment here let's say M2 which is different from M1 and when I look at this piece of the body I also have to have that the net resultant force and resultant moment equals zero and it doesn't matter what section cut I make in the system and I've been drawing these sort of vertical cuts but they could also be slanted if I wanted and then when I looked at this body here there's a force there's a moment and taken all together over here, the resultant force and the resultant moment have to equal zero for the system to be in equilibrium. And so the tests for equilibrium on a deformal body are much more complicated because you have to have a methodology for considering all possible section cuts uh, for the system to be in equilibrium.